as you can see JC Valadon came through the top half of the draw uh, taking out uh, Dan Oleru so losing out to Dan Oleru in the semi-final and it was Chef's teammate Steve Vyer that came through uh, you tell me it's George Ivanitsky. That's what I've heard, yeah. And uh, the Ukrainian will go up against the Frenchman, and here they come. First up, George Ivanitsky of Ukraine. Ranked 69th in the world, taking on the hat wearing JC Avalonol, ranked 24th in the world. I'm guessing he's wearing the hat to keep the raindrops out of his face. It's rather handsome bit of head apparel that he's wearing. He's an avid fisherman, so he might have something to do with that. Just an outdoors, but in, in, in general, he loves to be outdoors. Well, perhaps that will play to his benefit here in these rainy conditions. Georgi Ivanitsky, and on the circuit as George from Ukraine will take on uh, Valadon. And perhaps not the uh, bronze medal match lineup that we're expecting here, but uh, often is the case in archery, you shoot one in qualification and you're on fire, you can do, you can make uh, big inroads into a, a deeper field. Yeah. Well, this for the bronze. And it's JC Valadon to shoot first. Now, it's not often that you see uh, an athlete wearing such a wide-brimmed hat as J.C. Valadon. Is that going to affect uh, the draw? I think not, because he is uh, coming from the bottom with his draw. So, in any case, he will hit the, the hat from the bottom, and then it won't affect the, uh, the course of the string. But I don't think it hits at all. Yeah, he's got it tilted on the back of his head. And uh, as you can see, it's not affecting him one little bit. A good solid 10 for his second oh. arrow. Yeah. Ivanitsky goes better on his second arrow, but it's only a nine. Oh. Oh. Another 10. And that is the first set over already. Ivanitsky will shoot his final arrow, keep his sights in. JC Valadon, the previous European champion, he won the European Championships in 2016, uh, which is also the year he became second on the Olympics. So he's no small competitor. He's a big name in archery. Uh, don't be fooled by that world ranking of 24. He hasn't had the best year, and maybe last year wasn't his best year either, but uh, he took a little break after the Olympics, as uh, as one should, I think. And uh, he took some time to get back, but I, I'm here to argue he's back. I think you may well be right. As we take a look at uh, all the beautiful architecture. This uh, city uh, born in the 12th century. It's been on a uh, road map of, uh, oh. ever since then, as a trading post, it's tucked away, a hidden treasure. You talk about the Olympics and taking a rest, it's, it, is, it is a cycle every, every four years for all Olympic sports, yeah. uh, and taking that break is crucial because you need to recharge your batteries both physically and mentally. Yeah, I would say so. For me it was more mentally than physically, uh, and I took uh, uh, probably two and a half to three months off uh, of archery just to find the fun back in it. it sure is fun to shoot like that. It's a great first arrow from Ivanitsky. It's 
start of the second set of the uh, bronze medal match in the men's individual recurve. Penultimate action on the range here. Oh, well, Ivanitsky has a really no not of his Ukrainian oh, style cool. technique. Uh, JC has his, his whole own style. You, you can see well, he pulls back his bow really low. Um, I've been told that it has to do with a shoulder condition where if he doesn't do it like that, uh, his left shoulder or his right shoulder, one of his shoulders uh, pops out of its socket. You don't want that to happen? No. So that's uh, the reason he does it like that. As I'm sure even Ivaniski will clinch this set with his last arrow. Yep. And a very, very good grouping. So out of reach for JC. But a nice marker for the next set. Next set, I should say. So two set points apiece after two sets. Did have to have a measure in the first set. Uh, it's the result being confirmed. So you were saying a little bit earlier on, to go back to the discussion about the Olympic Games, that you were in Tokyo itself getting acclimatized and uh, yeah. used to the conditions? Just uh, not necessarily to get used to it, but more to experience it and uh, to take action, undertake action if we need to do something else than, uh, than we did before. Um, so we got the chance to experience the heat, but also the humidity and uh, the way Japanese people work, because there is a cultural difference as well. So it's nice that we were able to take an extra trip to Japan to see what it's like. And how is your personal preparation going? My personal preparation is going quite well, actually. Uh, my shooting itself hasn't been what I would like it to be, but everything around it is going really well. And then, uh, getting physically fit again, and so I'm on the on the way back. I would say. Well, we start the third set here in Poland at the European Championships, and it's JC Valadon to shoot first. Perfect shot. Everything in that shot just went right, as it seemed. So the moment he released everything, his left hand went to the target, his right hand went like, close to his, uh, his neck. I'd say, if anybody asked, like, what does the, the perfect shot look like, I would want them to show that one. Well, another one. And, uh, if Ivanitsky's uh, grouping was good in the previous set, JC Valadon is going even better in this third set. Consistency now coming to the Frenchman. A perfect 30 out of 30 confirms the set points for him here in this bronze medal playoff. And it's a good grouping from Ivanitsky, just a little low and a little right. You can see him just indicating that to his coach. So both archers shooting really well in terms of grouping. Yeah. I think. Uh... Yeah, he's adjusting his sight right now. Uh, Ivanitsky is adjusting his sight, so he knows that the shots were okay. He just needed to put the group a little higher. And he did so by adjusting his sight. Look at that. Just incredible. So close to each other, those two in yeah. the X. That inside rig is six centimeters. Just to give you a perspective on how close the arrows are to the middle. And then keep in mind that they're not shooting at 20 meters, they're not shooting at 30, they're shooting at 70 meters. It's incredible, isn't it? Twice the length of the 737, I'm told. Might as well be, I have no idea. I have no idea how long a 737 is. Well, 35 meters. Apparently. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, and they're hitting something what? Just a, a little bit uh, wider than your mobile phone. Yeah. 
that's certainly in the, in the X anyway to, to score a 10. And that flight of the trajectory of the arrow climbs up to a peak of 10.5 metres from level. JC is actually after this tournament, he's going pretty much straight to uh, Italy for the World Championships in field archery. So, well, so they can stay outdoors. Field archery being a format where you go into the forest and shoot different distances the whole day and uh, different size targets and different angles as well so you shoot up and down yeah different elevations so if archery's version of golf yeah sort of again five in a row from the frenchman Not bad from Ivanitsky, everything in the gold. But a nine for European bronze for JC Valadon. And he gets a nine and he does get the European bronze medal. A brilliant end for Charles, John Charles Valadon. He scored. Well, just dropped a single point in the last six arrows. Yeah. So an incredible bit of consistency from the Frenchman. And it's enough to take him to that bronze medal. It wasn't a bad performance from George Ivanitsky. But when it mattered, the arrows flew into the 10 for JC Valadon.